In this video, we are going to talk about parent functions and their transformations. But first of all, you need to know the basic parent functions. The first one I will talk about, y is equal to x. y is equal to x, you should quickly learn that this is the diagonal line with a positive slope going right through the middle. It is when every single x is equal to the y. Now, if you don't know how to graph functions, you can always go back to the trusty table. Plug in a value for x and solve for y. So you see when I plug in negative 1 for x, I get negative 1 for y. When I plug in 0 for x, I get 0 for y. When I plug in 1 for x, I get 1 for y, etc. I can plot a few points, draw a line through them, and that is the graph of y equals x. Okay, now we will quickly look at the parabola. This is the graph y is equal to x squared. When I plug in negative 2 for x, I will square it, I will get positive 4. When I plug in negative 1 for x and I square it, I will get positive 1. When I plug in 0 for x and square it, I will get 0. If I plug in positive 1, square it, I get 1. And I will go ahead and fill in these points. So 2, 4, and when I plug in 3, I will get 9. And that is the graph of the parabola. Okay, now let's graph the square root function. This is the function y equals the square root of x. When I plug in 0 for x, the square root of 0 is 0. When I plug in 1 for x, the square root of 1 is 1. When I plug in 4 for x, the square root of 4 is 2. When I plug in 9, for x, the square root of 9 is 3. That is our square root function. Also notice, when you graph the square root, this picture does not show up when any of these x's are negative. All of these x's, negative 1, our graph is not pictured over here because we do not have a real number if x is negative. And I'm not going to graph the absolute value function, but this is a picture of the graph of the function y is equal to the absolute value of x. And our last parent function that I want to show you, the cubic function, y is equal to x to the third. And if you would like to graph this, you plug in several values for x, cube them, and find your matching y. Now let's do some transformations. I have the basic graph, y is equal to x squared. It is a parabola. What if I wanted you to graph y is equal to x squared plus 4? That is, you take your basic parabola, I see the y is equal to x squared, and plus 4 just sends every single y up four places. The graph is shifted up four places. So we will call this a vertical shift. Next, let's say I want you to graph y is equal to x minus 3 in parentheses squared. I see the squared. I know it's a parabola. But in the parentheses, I have x minus 3. This will take your graph. It will not send it up. It will not send it down it will send it right or left. In this case, it's going to send the graph to the right three places. This is a horizontal shift. When I take my function, and in the parentheses I add or subtract, but be careful. You go opposite of what you may think you should go. Now what if I took the original graph but I flipped it 
over the x-axis. I reflected it over the x-axis. This is a graph of y is equal to negative x squared. I see the x squared. I know it's a parabola, but it has a negative in front of that. It is reflected over the x-axis. Okay, let's do some transformation using the square root function. So we will begin with y is equal to the square root of x. And here is the parent function. If I wanted you to graph y is equal to the square root of x plus 5, that would just send your graph up 5 units. That is a vertical shift. What if I wanted you to graph y is equal to the square root of x minus 4? Now this number is inside the radical. This is a horizontal shift. But remember, you may think it goes to the left because of that negative, but this is a shift four places to the right. So let's graph y is equal to negative the square root of x. With that negative in front, that is a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, let's try a new one. Let's try to graph y is equal to the square root of a negative x. That is not a reflection over the x-axis. That is a reflection over the y-axis. So this is a perfect time to play with your graphing calculator. Type in a function and then add something, subtract something, and see the transformations for yourself. Okay, let's try to graph this transformation without using our calculator. I see that this is a square root function, and I believe that because of this negative 3, I'm going to go right 3. Because of this negative out in front, I believe it, it is going to be reflected over the x-axis. And because of this positive 5, I think it's going to be a vertical shift up. So here is my square root function. So I believe I'm going to take this function and it's going to go to the right 3. I believe it is going to be reflected over the x-axis. And then I believe it is going to be a vertical shift up five places. So we have now moved our starting point from 0, 0 to it's actually now at 3, 5. Okay, I want to show you one more type of shift. And I'm going to use the graphing calculator to help me. So I'm going to type in y is equal to x squared. And I will graph it. And there is my parabola. Exactly what I expected. Now I'm going to type in, go to your y equal button. I'm going to leave my parent function up there. But this time I'm going to type in 3x squared. So it would be 3x squared, graph it. Now, it's not as colorful as my earlier graphs, but this parabola got skinnier. Some people call this a stretch when you multiply. Now let's pause for a second. I'm going to go back to my y equal button. And this time, instead of 3x squared, I'm going to type in a fraction. Oh, let's say 1 -third. I'm going to make sure I put that in my parentheses. That will be 1 divided by 3 for 1 third. So 1 third x squared. And this is a vertical shrink. Some people like to say it gets fatter. Let's graph it. And sure enough, this graph way out here is y is equal to 1 third x to the second. So my first graph y is equal to x squared was this parabola right here. My second graph, y is equal to 3x squared. 
that was a vertical stretch. Some people call it getting skinnier, and that was the skinnier graph right here. And the third function that I graphed was y is equal to one-third x squared. It is multiplied by a number between 0 and 1. This is a vertical shrink. Some people like to say this is, this makes your graph fatter. Hopefully this helped you with transformations of functions.